Welcome to the Faith Lutheran Church Sermon for Sunday, April 3rd, 2016. Today, Pastor Bob Hiller brings us a message entitled, To the Church in Moore Park, Peace Be With You, based on the reading from John chapter 20, verse 19 to 31. Let's listen in. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text today is going to be taken from the reading in the Gospel of John. Let's begin with the word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the grace you have shown to your church. We thank you for your Jesus, who has come to be our Lord and our Savior, our God and our King. Help us, dear Father, to trust in Jesus no matter what may come, knowing that you love this church, Lord. Grant us your peace in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, here we go. Deep breath. We're going to make it through this. Now, I was trying to figure out how do I begin my last sermon here at Faith Lutheran Church? What do I say? What do I think? There's so much emotion, so many thoughts build up over the last 10 years, and I found inspiration this week. If you follow me on Facebook, you may know where I'm going with this. But I found inspiration from Dennis Bradshaw's favorite television show, Seinfeld. All right. And I found my inspiration from a particular episode known as the Festivus episode. You may recall if you ever watched Seinfeld, maybe you didn't, but there is a holiday that they celebrate in George Costanza's house called Festivus. And what this holiday is, is a reaction against the over-commercialization of Christmas. They're not having Christmas, they're having Festivus. And you know how you start a festivist celebration? Everybody sits down at the table and someone stands up, particularly the person at the head of the table, and they begin with what they call the airing of the grievances. And you go through the past year and tell everybody at the table what they have done to make you upset. So, I figure I got about 10 years here uh, to begin to quote Mr. Costanza. I got a lot of problems with you people, and now you're going to hear about them, okay? So, we're going to start with Rob Phillips. Uh, Where is Rob? Oh, he's in the other room this morning. I'm joking. I told him I was going to do that. Of course I'm joking. I have no grievances to air with you all today. In fact, as I thought about that joke, it it was almost overwhelming. I thought, oh man, I actually have nothing negative I can even think of about my time here at Faith. it's It's all good. And I'm sure there's some bad things in there, but not a single one of them comes to mind today. I love you all a great deal, and I will miss this church a great deal, but now I still have to preach a sermon to you, and I still don't know exactly what I was supposed to say to you, and I thought, wouldn't it have been great? We just went through Revelation for like 107 weeks, or 665 weeks, kind of felt like that. Uh, It's a Revelation joke. And I thought, wouldn't it have been great if I had an encounter this week in my office while I'm packing up my books and getting everything ready to go, if I had an encounter with Jesus like John did. Remember, this is what it said. On the Lord's day, I was in the Spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And I thought, wouldn't it have been awesome if I'm in my office and I hear a trumpet blast? And then, standing behind me is Jesus. And Jesus says, here's what I want you to say to the Lutheran church in Moore Park. It would have been great if Jesus had done this for two reasons. One, it would have helped me write my sermon. And two, he could have helped me pack, you know, (laughs) because he's Jesus and he could have made that go a lot faster than it actually did. Uh, And I thought that would be great if he just appeared and told me what he wants me to say to you all today. And then I read the gospel lesson for this morning. And I realized Jesus has appeared to me, just as he has appeared to you. And he's telling us exactly what we need to hear this morning. He appears to us as he always appears to us, on the pages of Holy Scripture, in his word. And there, in our reading today from the Gospel of John, we hear exactly what Jesus wants us to hear this morning. We have the exact message from him. He appears to his disciples. He's in the, the, the disciples are gathered. This is the church, right? Gathered in a locked room out of fear. They're uncertain about the future. They don't know where Jesus' body is. They're all terrified. They don't know what's coming. They're living up there with fear and uncertainty. And quite frankly, they're dealing with unbelief. In fear and unbelief, they gather together trying to figure out what is coming next for them. And what comes next is remarkable. It's Jesus. He appears to them in their fear and unbelief. 
And he says a message to them that they then delivered to everybody outside of those walls after that day. And that message was then delivered from them to everybody else. And then that has spread throughout the church, throughout the history of the world. This is the message Jesus speaks to his whole church throughout the world. And it's the message he speaks to us here this morning. The words Jesus would have me say to you here at Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park this morning is this. Peace be with you. Peace be with you be with you. Now, it may be hard for us to feel very peaceful here this morning because this is a day of sorrow. At least it is for me. Maybe not for all of you. Uh, Maybe some of you are waiting for the sermon to be over and kicking me out quicker than (laughs) I would like. Uh, But this is a sad, difficult day. It's a day of transition. It's a day where we don't really know what's coming next. For me, this is a very big time of fear and uncertainty. I don't know what's going to happen after I leave here. The one thing I love about being at Faith is, is I know you guys love me. So you're going to be nice to me, right? Like, I don't know what's coming next. And you guys don't know what kind of pastor you're going to get. And there's uncertainty and there's fear in that. I don't think this is a place where we're going to find unbelief today. Though maybe we're struggling, but that's kind of another conversation. But certainly we come here with fear and uncertainty this morning. And yet Jesus comes into our midst with this word, peace be with you. And as we say all the time around here, what Jesus speaks happens. And so he brings peace to you from his word. Remember this, and if if I've taught you nothing else, and if you remember nothing that I've ever said as your pastor, remember this. Certainty and confidence comes to us from God's word alone. Our confidence resides there. His word never lies. His word never fails. Christ's word is living and active and it is true and it is true for you. And so this morning, his true word for you is this. Peace be with you. Today he speaks peace into your hearts. And from our reading from the Gospel of John, we have at least two reasons why we know we can have peace on this day. There's a lot of reasons why we can have peace on this day. But we have at least two from John's Gospel this morning. And the very first reason is this. It's Easter. And He is risen. risen Alleluia. So He says these words to unbelieving Thomas, which are great gospel to us. Put your fingers here and see my, my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Jesus is indeed risen from the dead. And a risen Jesus means we have a present Jesus. A dead Jesus is an absent Jesus. A dead Jesus is nowhere to be seen. A dead Jesus is nowhere to be heard. A dead Jesus is nowhere to be trusted. But we do not have a dead Jesus, but a risen one. And a risen Jesus who says this to his apostles and therefore to the whole church before he ascends into heaven. Behold, I am with you always even to the very end of the age. We have peace this day because our Jesus is risen from the dead and this risen Jesus is present with us. Here at Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, Jesus is present. There's a beautiful illustration of this that comes from your former pastor's book, Down in the Weeds. Pastor Nellison tells this beautiful story of a day in which he was having a really, you know, downright, no good, very bad day. Pastor Nelson was grumpy, he was upset, he was irritated, everything was making him punchy. And it was a Saturday, and so he probably hadn't written his sermon yet. We all go, no, that goes. Uh, and so he was here at the church, and he was getting ready to leave. And at the time, uh, there was a Hispanic church that was meeting here, kind of a, a strange group of folks, but they were meeting here at the time. And uh, Pastor Nelson was, was walking out, and this lady came to the door, and she was getting ready for worship. And they began talking, and he was kind of anxious and ready to leave, but she was, she was very patient and very kind, and he started to enjoy the conversation. And she said these words to him, which I think are just beautiful. She said, it's nice to worship the Lord here. She said, the Lord touches you here. And thinking about those words, I, I caught this in the Revelation passage this morning. It's great, where John falls down, remember? And he says, I fall down like a dead man. And Jesus reaches down and he touches him. And he says, don't be afraid. Kind of another peace be with you moment. And I thought, this is true. What this woman said is absolutely true. Jesus touches you here. He touches you in your ears 
when you hear his words. Sometimes he touches us uh, so that it's an attack. It, it causes us to fear because, you see, he comes after those sins in our lives, those sins that separate us from him, that we're using to keep him at arm's length. Jesus comes and he attacks those things with his law. And then once we're down on the ground like John when he came into the presence of that trumpet blowing Jesus, when he's down there on the ground, then Jesus comes and he touches us with his word of gospel. And the good news of forgiveness and life and salvation touch our ears and our hearts and they raise us up to live this new life in the embrace of Christ. Jesus comes and he touches us here through the bread and the wine which are his body and blood as they touch our lips and our tongue and we take and we eat and drink for the forgiveness of our sins, for life and salvation. Jesus is risen. And He is... That was great. That wasn't even planned. Well done. I'm getting bored with the sermon, I see. Jesus is risen and He's alive. I'm going to get that hole in there. He's, and He's alive and He's here. But His presence is not one to be afraid of. Jesus is not here, you see, to air the grievances. But to speak words of mercy, of forgiveness, and kindness. Jesus is here to forgive. Listen to the words that he says to his disciples after he appears to them. He walks in the room and he says, Peace be with you. And I imagine they all kind of look at each other like, How did he get in? Look, the doors are locked. How did this guy get in here? And so as they're all confused, typically, Jesus says this again, Peace be with you. Now listen, as the Father sent me, I am sending you. And with that, Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. In other words, go out and start forgiving. That's what Jesus has come to do. To purchase the forgiveness of our sins with his own blood. To purchase you with his blood. And to forgive you. And then he sends people out to proclaim this forgiveness to you. So if Jesus is present here, he's got a message he wants you to hear. And it is this message of forgiveness. Now it has been my distinct honor and privilege to be the one to deliver that forgiveness to you these past 10 years. When I was in seminary, we had a professor. His name was uh, Dr. Bierman, which is just a great German Lutheran name. And Dr. Bierman would say this to us. Your job as pastors is to absolve sinners. It is to forgive sins. You are to be, he said, the absolution man. Now, be very clear in this. His point was not that only pastors can forgive sins. That's certainly not his point. His point was that as pastors, you only have one job. To make sure the people are getting the forgiveness of their sins. To deliver that forgiveness. And it has been my distinct privilege and honor to be the absolution man here for the past 10 years. But just because I'm leaving, as it, believe it or not, just because I'm leaving doesn't mean Jesus and his absolving word is leaving. Because you're going to have vacancy pastors who come. And they're going to deliver the same gifts to you. And then because, now here's the thing. Because Jesus loves this church, and you need to get this in your minds. Jesus, you know what? He actually loves this church. He bled for it. He died for it. He rose for it. For you. Jesus did all of this for you. It turns out he loves you a great deal. He loves this church more than you do. He loves this church even more than I do. And I got to tell you, I love this church a great deal. But Jesus loves it more than all of us combined. And so he's already got in his mind prepared for you a new pastor who's going to come. And that man's going to deliver to you the very gifts that Jesus has prepared for you. And that forgiving word, that absolving word is going to continue to be given into your ears and your hearts and your lives and you will continue to live under the reign of our forgiving God. And that forgiveness then is going to shape the way you treat one another. It's going to shape the way you live together in life together as a church so that you forgive one another and you love one another and you express peace with one another just as you have done for me for the past 10 years. I know you will do it for each other and I know you will do it for your next pastor. It'd be very sad to hear if you don't. You are a remarkable church and that pastor has no idea what a blessing he is walking into when he arrives. But what we all don't recognize is just how much Jesus loves this place and how much he has given for it and how his word of forgiveness will continue to be delivered to you. 
Dear friends at faith, you have nothing to fear in the days ahead. Because Jesus is risen, he's risen indeed, he's risen for you, to forgive you, to strengthen you, to sustain your faith. Jesus is the Lord of this church. He is the good shepherd of this church and he will continue to guide you and he will continue to bless you. And though I may not be the pastor to deliver these gifts to you, a new pastor will and he will be a tremendous blessing to you for he will deliver Christ to you. You see, Jesus is here. Now, as for you and me, I can get personal for a second. Oh, no, I'm actually going to cry. Uh, <laughs> goodbye, dear saints at faith. See you later, as I told the confirmation kids today. It is inevitable that we will meet again because Jesus has prepared a place for us in his Father's house with many rooms. And he's preparing a seat for us together, the same table. It's called the Marriage Feast of the Lamb. And there we will eat and we will drink and we will laugh and we will sing together. Now, truth be told, I'm going to probably be further down the table from you guys. See. Because Jesus said once, the first will be last and the last will be first. And you have done nothing but make me feel like the first for so long here. And I am grateful for this. And so I'll probably ask you to pass me some meat down at the other end. <laughs> I want you to know that whatever sins that may have been committed against me, I, I forgive all of them. But truth be, to be told, there's no festivus here. I can't recall any of them. And I'm grateful for that. But I ask you to do the same for me. Whatever sins I have committed against you, and I can think of those, they still keep me up at night. I won't list them for you now. Uh, whatever sins I have committed against you, I ask that you would please forgive me and please show me your mercy for those things. I hope that our time together in your memories will be colored by the blood of Jesus and you will remember the promises of your forgiveness that I was so blessed to deliver to you. I have no better words to say to you this morning perhaps than what St. Paul said uh, to the church in Philippians, and in Philippi. I'm going to switch these words a little bit because I'm not Paul and you're not Philippi, but uh, I do want to say these words because I think they are wildly appropriate and they capture quite well my affections for you. I thank my God and all my remembrance of you. <sighs> Always in every prayer of mine, for all of you, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, I am sure of this, that he who began this good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are fellow partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness how I yearn for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. So now I close my time with you. But not with my thoughts and not with my affections, but with the words that the Lord Jesus called me here to deliver to you the past ten years. Peace be with you, dear faith. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to you the forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Again, Peace be with you. And it is. Because Jesus is here. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this friendship, this partnership in the gospel that you have allowed us to experience these past ten years. May we, Lord, always be found faithful to you in all that we think and all that we say and all that we do, all to the glory of your name. Use us, Lord, as we move into our new places uh, with new pastors, with new situations. And Lord, use us to further your kingdom. Remind us, Lord.
that it is all about you and all about your grace and all about your Son, Jesus Christ. It's in His name we pray all of these things. Amen. Thanks for listening to the Sunday Sermon from Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. For more information, visit us on the web at faithmoorpark.com.